Hello there, I'm your friendly neighbourhood fangirl and earlier this year one of my friends introduced me to a cute cartoon show called Bean Puppy Cat. I fell in love with it so quickly and I knew that I had to cosplay Bean, the main character among the rest of the super cute cast. This cosplay was a step up for my others in terms of sewing and prop making and I made this video to show you all how I progressed through the creating process, whether you're just interested or wanting to cosplay Bean yourself. Her character design isn't detailed, it's more about achieving her simple look by using the right clothes and accessories. By the way, I don't own any images in this video except my own photos and videos. Let's do this! So, for my cosplay I chose the outfit that B only wears for a single scene in episode 1 if I remember correctly, but this look does seem to be her most popular. Looking at this character design sheet, B has two main items of clothing. First is a yellow sweater with a bee embroidered over the chest, and second is a cute skirt that has pockets with little bows on them. There's a few moments in the episode where you can see the colour of a white shirt peeking out over the top of the sweater, so if you want to wear that underneath you can, I chose not to. If you've watched any of my other cosplay videos, you'll know that I try to keep my approach to shopping as sustainable as I can. I go to charity shops to try and find what I want before turning to the more expensive option of buying new. Sadly this time around there turned out to be no yellow sweaters in the charity shops where I live, but I did succeed in finding this one, which is pretty much perfect in H&M for $15. I got white, black and yellow wool from Spotlight for $11 and then found a picture of the bee on the sweater and printed it out. The wrong way around, but oh well. I still cut it out and flipped it over so I was tracing around the right side on some plain black fabric. To get an idea of the size, it was 12cm long. Using the picture as a reference for where specific lines stopped and started, I stitched slash embroidered I don't know which word to use and created the bee. Ignore that random piece of fabric on the right side of this photo, I scrapped my original plan for making this when I realised there was an easier way. Basically, after I finished with all the colours, I cut the bee out and then my mum helped to sew the excess black back behind it so you can't see it. Then all I had to do was pin it onto the sweater with the safety pin. I hadn't sewn a skirt in a few years before doing this cosplay and I wanted to lay this one over a petticoat to get that extra volume, I think you call it. So I found a good video online to follow. Simple Elastic Waist Skirt Tutorial by Fabric.com the steps I followed are easily explained in their video, so I'll link it in the description for you, instead of copying everything they said right now. I added the pockets onto the skirt myself though. Out of the same pink fabric, I cut a square that was around 15 by 15 centimeters, and then I just curved the bottom corners in to create that rounded pocket shape. I folded in a 1cm hem around the edges, as you can see in this photo, and then hand stitched it straight onto the skirt. On the pockets of Bee's skirt, you can see that there are little bows in a lighter shade of pink. I got some fabric that matched this lighter shade and cut two pieces out, each the size of an A4 piece of paper. The bows were pretty simple to make. First I hemmed both sides, which I realised afterwards was unnecessary because the second step entails folding one side over to the other and sewing it down exactly like a hem. So if you're trying this yourself, just iron the fabric over one centimetre as a hem on each side, fold the sides over to touch and then sew down that line. Because I'm so good at this, I messed up the third step too with the photo. Basically, you fold the top and the end of your fabric tunnels in, slightly overlap, and sew down a straight line in the middle. We can go on to the second part of the bows now, which is the ribbon that wraps around the middle. But since you can't see any distinction in these bows and the middle is the same colour, I just used more of that same pale pink fabric. I cut a single strip that was around 4cm wide and 15cm long, and then sewed the longer sides together in that same tunnel technique as earlier. I cut it in half and pulled the two tunnels inside out to finish them. To finish the whole bow, scrunch that first rectangular piece of fabric in the middle, folding the fabric down a few times. Adjust it so you're happy with how both sides of the bow look. Then wrap the tunnel strip around the middle and hand sew it at the back, and you finish. The petticoat I wore under the skirt was from eBay, so I'll link it in the description below. And that's the clothes section of this video done. I made this collage of images from Bean Puppy Cat when I started doing this cosplay, which I definitely recommend doing for any character. Just looking at it got me motivated to keep working. I decided to make two props and I guess one accessory 
if paper pieces of a fake robot arm can be labelled as that. In the show, Puppy Cat can shoot a magical letter out of the bell on his collar when he and B want to do a temp job. This was obviously always a prop I wanted to make, so I started with the plain white sheet of A4 paper which I had to cut into a square. So each of the six pink stripes I had to cut out had to be 1.25cm wide and 11cm long. I cut them out and glued them on, cutting them additionally into small pieces to fit on the different levels of the white paper overlap. Then I added the little black borders on these parts, and last but not least, the little puppy cat symbol in the middle. For the phone, I used the dimensions of my own phone to get the right scale that would fit in my hand, and then drew out a shape net for a rectangle on purple cardboard. I cut it out and folded it to create the base of B's phone. Next, I printed out a rectangle of pink and a picture of the screen of her phone and glued them on. With the pink cardboard paper left over from the letter, I used a hole puncher to create the small round buttons and the larger buttons closest to the screen. One of the little buttons has a red centre too, so if you're going for all the details, make sure to add that. Talking about details, I added two more pink buttons on the side, as you can see in this photo, and some black markings to represent the cracks on the phone with the sharpie. To make the charm attached to the phone, you'll need some different colours of clay and a small bit of wire. The size of your bee will depend on how big you make the yellow ball for the body. I aim to make mine just a bit bigger than the sunflower head on its screen. You'll need to make two white oval shapes for the wings and flatten out two strips of black clay for the stripes of the bee, as well as making two little eyes and a mouth that's curved into a smile. And last but not least, the stinger. Twist your wire so there's a loop end and a pointy end that you can stick into the top of your charm. The next step is tying one end of a piece of red ribbon, which doesn't really fit the aesthetic, but that's what she has in the show, onto that wire connected to the bee, and the other end onto another wire hook thing that you have to twist together. Stick that piece of wire into the top of the phone, and you're done with it. On a white piece of paper, I traced down the size of my forearm so I could sketch the pieces of the robot arm I wanted to make on the right scale. You never really get a clear shot of Bee's arm in the show, so I used a few pictures for inspiration and kind of made up the rest. Then I coloured the pieces in. As you can see, I used a light blue and a dark blue for the background, and for the little mechanical bits and bobs hiding inside, I used yellow, blue and two different shades of pink. To attach these to my arm, I just put some double-sided tape on the back of each piece and stuck them on my skin. I admit it was a bit uncomfortable, but oh well. I wanted to stick some pastel streamer strips on my arm too, like Bee has in the show, but I didn't end up finding the right colours for them. Hopefully if you're doing this yourself, you'll have more luck than me. For the socks, I just used some white school uniform ones. Although the pair from Bee's outfit are really light pink, and one of them is shorter with some frills. And for the shoes, I found these at Target for $12. I kept my hair in plaits overnight, so when I took it out in the morning, it had some really soft, natural waves. My makeup supply hasn't grown any larger from the last time you saw me. I applied a layer of Maybelline Primer, and then a layer of Maybelline Master Concealer. And I actually tried mascara this time, and it wasn't as bad as before. Blinking while applying it definitely helped with the discomfort I had at first. I used Skin O2 blush on my cheekbones, and three different shades of pink eyeshadow from my BYS palette that blended nicely together from dark to light. And that's it. Here's how I looked in my cosplay. I shot these clips and took my photos for Instagram at a lovely garden centre, and I'm planning to go as B to a geek market coming up soon. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Liking, commenting, and subscribing is much appreciated. Check out my channel for more cosplay diaries, and other stuff like book recommendation videos and video essays. I'm hoping to get into some vlogging in the future too. Thank you for watching.